Hi everyone. Good afternoon. I got kicked off again. I don't think I don't know if Facebook likes me anymore because I never really had issues with getting kicked off before I started going live more often. But today is the second session for my weekly talks. Um, every Tuesday and Thursday, I'll be live here. So as you join, if you could let me know if you can hear me and see me okay, since I'm using my Killmonger microphone today. And I'll give everyone a few minutes to get the notification before I start sharing this week's tips, which this week I wanted to focus on something that has been getting to me as a coach and as a strategist. And I felt like if I am noticing this trend, then that means that customers are noticing it too. And that's no bueno for you all. So let me actually grab my mug. All right. All right. So good afternoon. My name is Rakesha Godfrey and I am the Projectpreneur. I help people turn their projects into profits, their DIYs into dollars, and their crafts into coins. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I'll be online to discuss strategies, tools, and resources to help you become better people and also better entrepreneurs. So I've given everyone a few minutes to jump on. As you join, please let me know if you're joining live, say live. If you're watching the replay, then let me know that as well. So I'll know to come back and answer any questions that you may have. Um, I invite you to share this video far and wide with your friends and anyone in your network. But I'll go ahead and get started. So today, the topic that I want to touch on is the common marketing mistakes that I see a lot of creative-minded business owners making. And before I do that, I want to thank two people. I want to thank my maternal grandmother and my father for the lessons that I'm going to share with you today because they come from uh, things that both of them have said to me um, growing up and like I finally get it now. So I want to share some of those things with you today. So um, First off, my main point here is that a lot of the marketing strategies that business owners have that actually work are actually lessons from older people. And I don't want to say old people, but older people. And I'll give you an example. So one of the things my grandmother always says is, you don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> I have a smart mouth. Um, I admit that I have a slick mouth. I've always been a smart aleck. My four-year-old is picking up on it now. And so what that means is, well, what she usually means by that is some of the things that I say, I have to, I had to learn that just because you're thinking something doesn't mean that you have to say it. And even then, if you have to say it, there's a certain way that you have to say what you need to say to get your point across. So my grandmother always tells me, you don't know how to talk to people. And here's how that applies to marketing. When you're speaking to your clients, you have to understand that sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. It's not the fact that you're requesting to purchase something from, you're requesting that they buy from you or give you money for something. It's how you're asking. And to that point, I want to ask you all to think about whether you know how your customers like to be talked to. Do they like to use, do they have any lingo that they use every day? Do they have any um, language or any kind of words or anything that they use with their friends that they might not use in a professional environment? Like, are they code switchers pretty much? And so when I think about my grandmother telling me that you don't know how to talk to people, what that means in business is, do you know how to talk to your customers? Do you know how to connect with them? Do you know what they like? Do you know what they hate? Do you know what they dislike? Do you know what they care about? Do you know what gets their blood boiling? Do you know what just they don't care about? If they saw it, they wouldn't think twice about it. So for that lesson, you don't know how to talk to people. One of the marketing mistakes that business owners make is they have not taken time to get to know their customer. And if you know anything about public speaking, the first rule of public speaking is to know your audience. Well, if you're telling your audience things that they don't care about, then they're not going to respond to you. The same thing with selling products. If you're selling them products that they don't care about, then 
why should they bother buying? If you're marketing products to them that they don't care about, then why would they bother buying from you? And I'll give an example. If you are, if you met a whole bunch of people at a health expo and you're trying to sell them bacon wrapped shrimp or something, they're going to be like, you're not listening to me. You weren't listening to me when we met and you're not listening to me now. I met you because I wanted to learn how to lose weight and eat healthier and take better care of myself. And here you are selling me something that's the complete opposite of that. You're selling me fried food. You're selling me processed food. You're selling me things that are going to do the opposite of helping me to achieve my goals. And so that's what that means in business. Like my grandmother said, you don't know how to talk to people. That's one of the marketing mistakes that people make. I know as creative business owners, sometimes we might use one part of our brain. And I really, I'm not really fond of that analogy, but for the most part, it at least makes, helps to make a point. But I know sometimes we like to use one side of our brain, but with marketing, hi Lisa, with marketing, you have to figure out how to use your creative side, but you also have to do some administrative work. And I know for creators, especially, we don't always like to do the administrative work. A lot of times we like to just focus on making stuff. Like I get so many clients who will say, I don't like the business part of it. I just want to make stuff. Well, you won't get to make stuff if you don't focus on the business part of it either. And so the second thing is, and this is from my dad. Um, <laughs> I heard this a whole lot my freshman year in college because um, I was so focused on proving people wrong. A lot of people on my way to college, because I had been such a high achiever in high school, a lot of those people told me things like, well, you're going to flunk out of college because college is not easy like high school. Like college, is, those teachers are not going to care about you. The work is not going to come as easy to you. So I could see you going way off to college and, you know, spending all your parents' money to get ready. And then you flunk out after one semester. Well, I was so determined to prove people wrong that I stopped calling home regularly. But you know, when I would call home was when I needed something. I ran out of food. Um, I needed money for whatever. Or of course, Florida has such harsh winters. So I, at one point, I even convinced my dad I needed boots and long pants and sweaters because it was starting to get cold in Tampa. And so <laughs> I laugh about that now because I'm like, I'm a parent and I know my daughter is probably going to pull that same stuff. But I'm just like, dude, you don't need no winter clothes from Florida. But at some point I did call home for that. And I think my dad got to a point where he was just like, um, you only call me when you want something. And I'm tired of that. Like, I want to hear from you. I want to hear about school. I want to hear about studying. I want to hear about if you're dating somebody. I don't want you to only call me when you need something. And that's one of the mistakes that um, business owners make, particularly creative minded business owners, is you're only communicating with your customer when you want something. Your entire approach sounds like that NSYNC song, bye, bye, bye. All you talk about is buy, 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 buy from me, buy this, buy this, buy this, get this bundle, get this shirt, get this new product, get whatever. Your whole line, your whole newsfeed is buy, buy, buy. That's all you talk about. And that means you're only coming at your customers. You're only trying to connect with them behind convincing them to make a purchase from you. And that's not what being in business is. That's actually a major marketing mistake that people make because you're always screaming buy, buy, buy but you don't have any kind of knowledge of what your customer is actually looking for. You don't have a customer avatar. You don't have a marketing plan outside of singing that song. And you're out here adding hundreds of people to your Facebook page. You don't max out your friend list. You're adding people to Facebook. And if, as soon as you add them as a friend and they accept your friend request, you go and you invite them to like your page. And you wonder why your engagement is low on your Facebook page. Well, that's why. And when you think about it in terms of how the older generations had to network, they weren't able to do something like that. And I'll put that in real world, real world terms because that's been happening a lot to me. And that's what's been frustrating because I'm like, did you connect with me on Facebook just so you can grow your page numbers, even though it's not even a page that I'm interested in? Like you're selling something that I'm not remotely interested in, but 
you didn't even take the time to think about that. You're worried about your vanity numbers. You're worried about being able to say, I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and 6,000 followers on my Facebook page. Okay, great. But how many of those people are actually buying from you? And so I want to put that scenario because I know that's very, very common. It's common enough that it happens to me so much that I have stopped accepting friend requests on Facebook because people keep adding me and then they just want me to like their page or they're forcing me into their groups. And that's actually quite rude. So I'll give you a real world example. So let's say you're out at a restaurant, let's say like Chick-fil-A or something, cause they have those new meal planner kits. You're out at Chick-fil-A picking up your kit and you're in close proximity to someone in line so that you guys are just, you know, you're just shooting the breeze, um, talking about superficial stuff. And then you realize that you both have a kid that plays soccer and y'all might be on the same soccer team. Okay, great. So you guys agree you're going to exchange numbers. All right, great. So you've made that connection. Well, as soon as you get into the parking lot, you have a text message in your phone from them that says, hey, it was great to meet you. Go here and buy one of my t-shirts. That's what that's like when you do it on Facebook. That's exactly what happens. You add somebody as a friend, y'all make that superficial connection at first, and then you take it a step further and offer them something that you haven't even decided or done the research to figure out if it's something that they want. Now, let's say you're in Chick-fil-A and you're wearing a dress and a blazer and that person's wearing something similar. Nothing about your appearance, nothing about what you talked about, nothing about what you shared gave them any impression that you were on the market for t-shirts but for some reason they thought okay this is a new connection bam here's my t-shirt information go buy something from me even though i don't even know if it's something that you actually need that is a huge mistake and if it's a huge mistake in person that means it's also faux pas online so i want all of you to please stop doing that <laughs> Please stop also adding me as your friend and adding me to your groups and forcing me to try to like your page. If I want, if I'm interested in something that you buy, it will be because I have already engaged with you. I've trusted you. I've done my own research. And then that's when I'm going to support you. It won't be immediately after I accept your friend request, especially if I don't really know you in real life. And this is just to grow my network outside of people that I actually know. And so here's the thing about that. You want to focus on building an organic following. You don't want vanity numbers. And I know that's really hard for some people to wrap their head around because they think people care about numbers. Some people do care about numbers. And some people will say, oh, she only has 100 likes on her Facebook page, so I'm not going to buy from her. But then there are other people who will say, yes, yeah, she only has 100 likes, but here she is engaging with everyone that makes a comment. She's um, liking their pictures. She's showing other people's products. Like she's showing mad love to other people. Those are the, pe those are the numbers that you care about. You care about customers that are your target audience and i would rather you have 200 likes on your facebook page and all those people are like oh my gosh i love all her stuff versus 2000 likes and none of those people are ever even going to like your stuff they're never even going to make a purchase that's what a vanity number is and that's what i want people to stop focusing on stop focusing on the vanity numbers stop focusing on singing that in sync song bye 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 and focus on your client. Don't focus, and, and I know a lot of people will ask me, how do I get more sales? Well, the main thing I tell them is stop focusing on the sale. That's it. Don't focus on the sale. Don't focus on the product. Focus on your customer. Focus on, instead of saying, I have this new bracelet, I have this new t-shirt, I want everybody to buy. No, that's not what you focus on. Focus on who is going to buy it. Focus on how that's going to help them in their life. How is that, how is that product going to make their life better? And that leads me to my third point. Um, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I know, uh, I, hear, I heard that a lot when I was in college and I was networking and I was looking for jobs. People, I would get passed over because of nepotism. And I would hear, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And that's true in business as well, especially with marketing. It's not what you know. And the what in this case is your product. We know you know your product front to back. You know the dimensions. You know the materials. You know where you source the materials. You know how old it is, how long it lasts, how to take care of it. You know all of that. But who do you know? Who do you know that's going to buy that product? 
And a lot of times it's not going to be your family and friends. I shared in my Crafts to Coins introductory class how you can move past um, not having your family and friends support you. Because a lot of times the who in that situation is not going to be people that you know. And in business, in marketing, it is it also applies. It's not who you know. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who do you know who can become your customer? Who do you know who can become a brand ambassador? Who do you know that's going to actually buy your stuff, that's going to post on social media and tag you and make sure that people don't come to you asking for discounts? They're going to give you a true recommendation to their friends. That's why... It's not what you know, it's who you know. That matters. So I think a lot of times people make the mistake of thinking that since we're in this digital age, that some of the things that the old folks say don't still apply. But I'm here to tell you all that stuff still applies. People have not been saying these things for all these years because they don't work and they don't apply. It still applies. It still matters. And that's what I want to drive home today. So if you want to know anything about marketing, go talk to your grandmothers, go talk to your parents, because they know. And a lot of the stuff that they're telling you, it's about dealing with people. And that's what being an entrepreneur is about. Your customer service is what's going to help you stand out. People will pay more for the same product if you have better customer service as Publix, as Chick-fil-A. People are willing to continue to support you if you know that you're going to treat them well, you're going to treat them with dignity and respect, and you're going to make them feel like you appreciate them. And so that's the topic that I wanted to talk about today is the common marketing mistakes that I see a lot of creative business owners make. I'm going to challenge all of you to continue networking, but to network not for the sake of vanity numbers, but to network for the sake of building organic followers, do your research. I do have a Crafts to Coins round two. It, the sign up actually closes tonight at midnight. And it's still $97. You can catch the uh, replay on my page here. And you can sign up on my website at www.rakisha.com. I think it's slash product slash crafts to coins and the number two. I also have a masterclass on Saturday called Slay Your Sales. You can join me on Saturday at 11 a.m. And I have a couple other things. You can check the event tab under this page. That's all I have for you today. But I would like for you all to join me every Tuesday and Thursday at noon where I'll talk about strategies, resources, and tools to help you become better people and also better entrepreneurs. Thank you all for joining me. And I hope you have a great day.